Hi, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Soumya. We are going to continue with the photosynthesis in this video, and this is the part two video. And the content for this video is site of photosynthesis, and second one is photosynthetic apparatus, and third one is a photosynthetic uh, um, pigments. Okay, so these are all. Uh, these are the three topics which I am going to discuss in this video. Okay, let's begin with the first one: site of photosynthesis. So in the previous video, we talked about the what is photosynthesis and what are the uh, reactions or the phases of the photosynthesis. That is light reaction and dark reaction. Now we are going to uh, know about or learn about the site of photosynthesis. Means where the photosynthesis is going to take place in case of plants. Okay. And here, the first point here is that like uh, leaf is the main chief organ of photosynthesis. Yes, uh, in leaf only photosynthesis is going to take place. So that uh, so that leaf is the leaf is the chief organ of photosynthesis. And mesophyll is the site of pho photosynthesis since it contains chloroplast. The chloroplast will be present inside the mesophyll cells. Next point, the cells surrounding vascular bundle constitute bundle bundle sheath. Uh, do you know what is vascular bundle? B vascular bundle means, uh, it is a conducting uh, vessel of the plant. Uh, means it consists of xylem and phloem. That is called as vascular bundle. And and this vas under around the vascular bundle, the cells surrounding the vascular bundle actually it is called as a bundle sheath. Here, bundle sheath usually doesn't contain chloroplast. However, in a group of plants called C4 plants, bundle sheath contains a chloroplast. This is called as cringe anatomy. So, what is cringe anatomy? As I said uh, just now, so the uh, the location of the chloroplast is mesophyll cells. In mesophyll cells, we are going to find the chloroplast. But in bundle sheath, chloroplast is not present. But in uh, there are plants called as C4 plants. In those plants, the bundle sheath contains a chloroplast, and that is called as cringe anatomy. Okay, so it cringe means uh, a writh or a ring you can say. Okay, it is a uh, it is a what is cringe anatomy? It is nothing but it is a special structure in C4 plants where the mesophyll cells are clustered around the bundle sheath in a ring like fashion. So in that bundle sheath, we are going to find the chloroplast. And also uh, the number of chloroplast, uh, the number of chloroplast uh, absorbed in the bundle sheath is more than the number uh, number of chloroplast in the mesophyll cells. In the case of C4 plants, okay. Uh, moving on to the next point. Thus, in C4 plants, pot, uh, photosynthesis occurs in both mesophyll cells and bundle sheaths. Uh, bundle sheath cells, okay. Because why? In normal plants, in bundle sheath chloroplast, chloroplast is absent in bundle sheath cells. But in C4 plants, we are uh, bundle sheath cells have chloroplast. That's why in both mesophyll cells and bundle sheath cells, the photosynthesis is going to take place. Next point: Stomata are the gateways of exchange of gases. Of stomata, stomata will be like this. Right, so uh, the uh, stomata is the region where uh, there is a movement of uh, our exchange of gases is going to take place. So that's about the site of photosynthesis. See, only two points you have to remember: the site of photosynthesis is mesophyll cells, and then uh, in C4 plants, it is both uh, mesophyll cells and bundle sheath cells. Next point: photosynthetic apparatus. So, in bacteria, photosynthesis occurs in structure called as chromatophores. Coming to the bacteria, now we are talking about the bacteria. In bacteria, photosynthesis is occurring in a structure called as chromatophores. Okay, and these chromatophores are mem membranes that contains the photosynthetic pigments. So, uh, this chromatophore contains a photosynthetic pigments. In some bacteria, chromatophores is a plasma membrane. So, what happens in some bacteria? Plasma membrane is a chromatophore. For example, purple sulfur bacteria or purple bacteria, and in some bacteria, it is plasma membrane invaginations. Like if there is, it is a if you think this is the plasma membrane, so plasma membrane invaginations uh, called chlorosomes. These chlorosomes contains the uh, chromatophores. Okay, that is the where the um, photosynthesis is going to take place in case of bacteria. And example for this is green sulfur bacteria. Next point. Cyanobacterium is having a membranous uh, extensions that are containing the pigments called as chromatophores. Another example, cyanobacteria is having membranous extensions. Okay, that are containing pigments called chromatophores. So, in total, in if you take a bacteria, photosynthetic occurs in a structure called as chromatophores. Okay, and moving on to the next uh, one, next point in plants. In case of plants, chloroplast is the organelle of photosynthesis. Okay, chloroplast is the structure where the photosynthesis is going to take place. That is the organ. Hmm. Chloroplast contains a matrix. Called stroma. Okay, chloroplast contains a matrix called stroma, and in stroma it contains a uh, enzymes of C3 cycle, glycolysis, and PPP. That is pentose phosphate pathway. So uh, in stroma, if you think this is the uh, chloroplast, so as you can see in the diagram, this is the chloroplast. Uh, the 
the matrix is the, uh, I, i'm just drawing the rough diagram here so this matrix if you think this is the chloroplast okay uh, this matrix is called as the stroma okay this is called as stroma the stroma contains an enzymes uh, of c3 cycle enzymes and glycolysis enzymes and pentose phosphate enzymes okay and the thylakoid so this thylakoid membrane sheet is differentiated into two types that is uh, grana grana and um, grana and stro stroma thylakoid this point the grana constitute stacked and uh, are oppressed membranes so as i said you can see in the diagram so the grana means it constitute stacked and one one upon the another one okay oppressed membranes and stroma thylakoid represents the unstacked or non oppressed membrane okay and here in the thylakoid system uh, thylakoid system encloses a medium called as lumen so a thylakoid system is going to enclose the membrane called as lumen so if if it is a thylakoid Lumen, इधर ना ना वो lumen नंता है डी, okay? That is called as lumen. The thylakoid membrane shows high amount of unsaturated fatty acids. So this thylakoid membrane shows high amount of unsaturated fatty acids because the res uh, the resultant of high fluid characteristic facilitate the movement of electron carriers. So just now I said the uh, there should be electron carriers should be present. No, I have explained that in light uh, light reaction and dark reaction. So the movement uh, the movement of the electron should be easy. The electron should electron should be carried out. So that is facilitated by a presence of an high amount of unsaturated fatty acids because those gives a high fluid uh, character so that uh, because of that the electron carriers are going to move next and the light phase is going to occur in thylakoid system okay so here you can see the note here you have to remember this one is important light phase it is going to occur in grana of the chloroplast and dark phase is going to occur in the stroma of the chloroplast next content uh, photosynthetic pigments so pigments are very important here photosynthesis uh, if uh, photosynthesis has to takes place uh, pigments are uh, plays an essential role here without that uh, it doesn't going to happen so then what is the function of this photosynthesis then the function of the photosynthesis is to absorb absorb radiant energy and enable its convergence into chemical energy the main function of this photosynthetic pigments uh, is that it converts the radiant energy into chemical energy okay. and these are called as antenna pigments okay the pigments which converts radiant energy into chemical energy those are called as antenna pigments and here photosynthetic pigments are of three classes all the points which i am explaining are important don't neglect like uh, uh, last few years the mysore university uh, con conducting an exam now it is uh, go and now it is under the kea right um, yes obviously there will be repetition of the questions and there will be important questions and it is good to solve the questions but it doesn't makes 100% so you don't know uh, way from where the questions are going to uh, asked right so because of that uh, you have to learn all the contents it's not like only learning tense which have been asked in the examination the, that type of study doesn't works in a competitive exam so to answer any kind of exam you should have to know whole the content when you know whole content then only you can answer any questions okay keep that in mind so why we are saying to solve the question paper means because it gives an idea to to understand the concept from where the questions have been asked so that you will be thorough in that concept so if there is any indirect questions from that from the same concept then you can able to answer it okay that's a uh, question papers will just a uh, gateways or it will make it uh, easy uh, for you to understand this exam pattern okay that's it so learning the each content understanding the each content is very important and uh, don't neglect any points here you don't know from where it is going to arise because simple questions are are going to taken from this type of contents only okay okay so the photosynthetic pigments are of three classes okay the first one chlorophylls okay that is the principal pigment second one keratinoids third one phycobilins keratinoids and phycobilins are accessory pigments okay the principal pigment is chlorophyll keratinoid and phycobilins are the accessory pigments the chlorophyll means principal pigment means it is the main pigment which absorb the sun uh, uh, sunlight okay so it is necessary it is must but keratinoids and phycobilins are called as accessory pigments why it is called as accessory pigments means these are also light uh, uh, light absorbing absorbing compounds only the plants need to absorb the light in different wavelength so that's why accessory pigments are present and these the main function of these accessory pigments is that these actually assist the chlorophyll a or chlorophylls 
okay these we are these are going to assist the principal pigments that's why these are called as accessory pigments now i will begin with the first one that is uh, chlorophylls okay and as i just now said chlorophylls are the chief pigments means they are the principal pigments and coming to the types of pigments here um, uh, it has uh, different types here chlorophyll a chlorophyll b chlorophyll c and then chlorophyll d and chlorophyll f so the examples are very important you have to remember chlorophyll a this chlorophyll a present in all oxygenic photosynthetic organisms uh, like plant cyanobacteria and pro prochlorophyte and coming to the chlorophyll b uh, chlorophyll b will be present in prochlorophyte and vir viridi plantae chlorophyte and viridi plantae example for the uh, viridi means green okay viridae plantae are Algae, green algae and higher plants. Okay, along with that, chlorophyll A, chloro uh, along sorry, along with along with chlorophyll B, these plants have chlorophyll A as well. And chlorophyll C, chlorophyll C you can see in ma marine algae, brown algae, diatoms and dinoflagellates along with chlorophyll A. So the main principle is uh, principal pigment is chlorophyll C. And don't forget that these might might be asked. Okay, di in uh, diatoms. in diatoms and dinoflagellates so the which chlorophyll is present chlorophyll c is present next moving on to the next chlorophyll chlorophyll d chlorophyll d is present in uh, rhodophyceae uh, called as a red algae along with chlorophyll a and chlorophyll f is present in cyanobacteria okay so how many chlorophylls are present chlorophyll a chlorophyll b chlorophyll c chlorophyll d and f okay these are all present in plants now moving on to the uh, bacterial chlorophylls so bacterial chlorophylls are a b c d e f and g okay and bacterial chlorophyll a it is present in pur uh, purple sulfur bacteria and in green sulfur bacteria this is also important remember so chlorophyll a is present in both pur purple sulfur bacteria and green sulfur bacteria but chlorophyll b is present in only in purple sulfur bacteria next chlorophyll c chlorophyll d chlorophyll e and chlorophyll f all these are present in green sulfur bacteria so now question if the question they they might ask like this or they will twist the question like this which chlorophyll is absent in green sulfur bacteria are you able to answer it now the answer is that the chlorophyll b is not present in green sulfur bacteria in green sulfur bacteria chlorophyll a c d e f is present okay and uh, g is also absent now this chlorophyll g is present in heliobacteria okay that is the example now so that's about the uh, plant uh, chlorophylls and bacterial chlorophylls now let's move on move on to the structure of chlorophylls the chlorophylls are amphipathic in nature amphi means two okay amphipathic in nature it has uh, both hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail philic means water loving hydrophobic means water hating hydro means water okay hydrophilic water loving hydrophobic means water hating here hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail is present as you can see in the diagram so hydrophobic head and hydrophobic tail now first we will learn the uh, hydrophobic head here the hydrophobic head basically consist of porphyrin so this is important the hydrophobic head of the chloro uh, chlorophyll consist of por porphyrin porphyrins are heterocyclic macrocyclic with four pyrrole rings that are interconnected with a methane bridge so this point says about the structure of the porphyrins the porphyrins are heterocyclic metro means different so it contains a different uh, compounds okay Dif uh, heterocyclic and macrocyclic macro means a uh, uh, big more than uh, tall atoms you can say with four pyrrole rings the pyrrole rings will be four pyrrole rings that are in a, uh, these pyrrole rings are interconnected by methane bridges and here what is this pyrrole ring pyrrole ring uh, is c4 h4 nh as you can see in the diagram it is the pyrrole ring that is c4 h4 nh and coming to this pyrrole ring these pyrrole rings are arranged in a cyclic and closed manner how these pyrrole rings are arranged arranged in a cyclic and closed manner hence this is called as cyclic closed tetrapyrrole 
okay moving on to the next uh, point here the pyrrole rings are enclosed the magnesium so this pyrrole rings are enclosed the magnesium as you can see in the diagram here the four nitrogen atoms are found around the magnesium and there is a pyrrole ring structure with four carbons and nitrogen okay so the four pyrrole rings with nitrogen and magnesium are together termed as a porphyrin head and the hydrocarbon end is the phytol tail so the the tail region that is which is a hydrophobic tail okay that contains the hydrocarbon end okay it, it is called as hydrophobic tail or phytol tail next point the porphyrin of chlorophylls differs from the porphyrin of heme in the following as aspects as you can see in the diagram so uh, porphyrin in chloro chloroplast and porphyrin in heme heme means blood so uh, in hemoglobin so okay the the porphyrin in chloroplast and porphyrin of heme is uh, they both are different so porphyrin of chloroplast how it is different from porphyrin of heme means the, these are the points here which i am going to explain now first one first one is central metal ion as you can see in the diagram as you can observe the central metal ion in the chlorophyll is magnesium mg and in case of central metal ion of the heme is iron that is fe okay that is the difference here and you can observe in the chlorophyll the porphyrin of the chloro uh, chlorophyll here you can observe the fifth chlorophyll okay a fifth uh, cyclopentanone ring is present fused with the third uh, pyrrol ring so you can observe that in the diagram uh, observe the first uh, sorry fifth cyclopentanone ring which is uh, present fused with the third pyrrol ring okay and next point the fourth observe the fourth one now the fourth pyrrole ring is partially reduced in the chlorophyll okay and a tetra isoprenoid alcohol moiety is attached to the fourth pyrrole ring as you can see in the diagram the for the fourth pyrrole ring a tetra isoprenoid alcohol moiety is attached next point the tetra isoprenoid alcohol may be commonly phytol or granyl granol in bacterial chlorophyll a in case of uh, plants the uh, tetra isoprenoid alcohol may be that is called as phytol in case of bacteria it is called as granyl granol in bacterial chloroplast a okay and the most important one this is asked in the examination so we have to remember chlorophyll a the formula of the chlorophyll a is c55 h72 o5 n4 mg and the formula of the chlorophyll b is c55 h70 o6 n4 mg and ek you to uh, remember it i just wrote the difference of these two so here it is in chlorophyll a it is 72 in chlorophyll b it is 70 in chlorophyll uh, i mean oxygen is 5 here uh, o oxygen is 6 so this is the difference so you can i guess by looking at it you can remember it easily so i changed the color here okay next moving on to the next point chlorophyll a and b are different mainly at the third carbon of second pyrrole so what where the difference between the a and b means here th at the third carbon of the second pyrrole ring okay because in chlorophyll a at, at that position methyl group is present in chlorophyll b formyl group is present that is cho and moving on to the next point chlorophylls are efficient photoreceptors okay photo means light receptor means receive receiving okay so they are going to receive the uh, light so chlorophylls are efficient photoreceptors due to their conjugated uh, nature conjugated means the what is the the meaning of uh, the english meaning of the conjugate means conjugate means joining one item is joined with the another that is the meaning of the conjugate okay the conjugate nature or polyunit nature is that it contains a system of alternating single bonds and double bonds why it is uh, chloroplast is uh, efficient photoreceptor means this is because of the uh, conjugated nature uh, what is that conjugated nature the uh, alternating single bond and double bonds are present so that actually helps in the efficient absorption of the sunlight okay that's about the chlorophyll structure in the next video i am going to explain the another two photosynthetic pigments that is keratinoids and phycobilins okay so now i just finished the chlorophyll uh, that is principal pigment in the next video we will learn about the accessory pigments that is keratinoids and phycobilins it's my pleasure to teach you all thanks for watching